Hadiom. Just over 150 years ago, the SS Truro docked at Port Natal, marking the arrival of the first Indians in South Africa. Their contribution to the economy, infrastructure, politics and the arts has been unprecedented, bringing to South Africa a unique identity. But amidst these contributions, a legacy of spiritual involvement spawned. Following the vision of the great Swami Shivananda to serve, love, give, purify, meditate and realize, the Divine Life Society of South Africa has earned a prestigious reputation as being an institution that preserves ancient traditions of our time-honored heritage while making a great impact by its contributions to our new South Africa. Through an in-depth exploration of the organization's lineage, we trace the spiritual path of the Divine Life Society of South Africa. Formidable, resilient, a tower of strength, providing support to the sick, healing to the needy, and inspiration to the suppressed. The Divine Life Society stands as a beacon of light to millions of devotees globally. Born out of a vision of His Holiness Swami Sivananda Saraswati on the banks of the mighty Ganga River in Rishikesh, India, the Divine Life Society emerged as a pillar of pure consciousness in 1936, rousing profound spiritual awareness and insight within the hearts of all seekers of all colors, creeds and class, and at the same time, awakening the Hindu society from a slumber of centuries of oppression. Born on September the 8th, 1887, in Patamadei, India, Sri Swami Sivananda was the world founder of the Divine Life Society movement. At a young age, he departed to Malaya, where he served as a doctor for about 10 years, but his intense yearning for God brought him back to India in 1924. After practicing intense austerities and meditation for prolonged periods, often up to 16 hours daily, he attained enlightenment and was recognized as one of the foremost sages of modern India. He began disseminating spiritual knowledge through books and publications, carrying the deepest wisdom in the simplest and most lucid style. His instructions were universal in their appeal and intensely practical in their application. In his lifetime, he wrote over 200 volumes on a variety of subjects, encompassing yoga and spirituality, and attracted thousands of disciples from all corners of the globe through his books, disseminating the spiritual knowledge and literature of Hinduism's great teachings and values. One of Swami Sivananda's publications, The Practice of Karma Yoga, caught the eye of a young teacher at a Durban bookstore. Srinivasan Maidu, who was later to become Sri Swami Sahajananda, knew at once that he had found his guru and master. He was fascinated to discover that spiritual life does not only purify the mind, but grants one God-realization as well. Henceforth, God-realization, or the path to moksha, became the goal of his life. Inspired by this ideal, Srinivasan lost all interest in his academic career. On his first visit to Swami Sivananda in 1948, the only yet simple instruction received from the master was, learn to type and make tea. Years later, Srinivasan understood that the Divine Master's cryptic words, learn to type and make tea, were hidden within the mystery of a deeper spiritual meaning. 
It meant dissemination of spiritual knowledge through his literature and service to the underprivileged. On his return to South Africa, he began spreading the master's spiritual literature in earnest, and in 1949, he received the master's instruction to start a branch in this country. As a testimony to his revered master and saint, the Divine Life Society of South Africa was formed primarily to distribute spiritual knowledge and hope to a largely disenfranchised Indian community. Reeling from the legacy of indenture, colonialization and later apartheid. He worked tirelessly, printing the master's books to the last days of his life and was an expert editor, typesetter, printer, bookbinder, etc. He always ensured that the master's books were of the highest quality. Especially amongst the Hindus, the society's literature sowed the seeds of unity and reform, bringing to the fore ancient Hindu tenets to help heal modern tribulations. In Pujya Swamiji's lifetime, these efforts have flowered beyond Indian, embracing the oneness of all in the new South Africa. Soon after returning from a pilgrimage to India in 1973, he was deeply moved by the plight of the poor and he resolved to send money to India. But upon reflection over this, he felt his divine master telling him from within, God in the form of Africans are suffering in this country. Why not do something for them first instead of sending money to India? so he decided to build projects for the poor and needy in this country. Swamiji, as he is often called, began projects for the underprivileged. These projects included schools, clinics, children's homes, creches, low-cost housing, peace and skills training centers, etc. His vision took devotees deep into the rural hinterland. In fact, it is often said that where the road ends, there you will find a Divine Life Society project. These projects have become synonymous with the organization and demonstrate the towering strength of the society based on the tremendous sacrifice of its followers. Swamiji completed over 300 such projects and the work of the society has proceeded uninterrupted since. The story of Divine Life Society of South Africa is inextricably bound to the life of Sri Swami Sahajananda. Affectionately known as Puja Swamiji, he breathed life into every facet of the society's work in the 58 years during which he was spiritual head. His life was characterized by his total and complete self-surrender to his Divine Master, Sri Swami Sivananda and he dedicated all of the hundreds of multi-million rand projects to his guru. 
In Pooja Swamiji's words, we are not tired of reiterating that the formation, growth and present status of the Divine Life Society of South Africa is due entirely to the grace of our Master, Sri Swami Sivananda. Swamiji worked tirelessly and selflessly promoting the Master's mission in this country, seven days a week with very little respite. Over the years, the Society's state-of-the-art printing presses produced thousands of high-class illustrated books and disseminated the universal teachings of Sri Swami Sivananda worldwide. Even now, the printing press continues to churn out large volumes of spiritual literature which is transforming the hearts of thousands with practical, broad and universal teachings, Hindu teachings that readily appeal to people of all religious faiths. The Hindu maxim, service to mankind is worship to God, exemplifies the path of the Karma Yogi and Vedanta reflects the wholeness and oneness of all life. Swami Sahajananda's mission, beginning with that one glance of a book, thus became a clarion call of service, not only to the Indian community, but to the country as a whole. Perhaps one of the greatest teachings that His Holiness Swami Sahajananda fostered was the total obedience to one's guru or master. The Guru Sishya Parampara or Guru Disciple Relationship is a hallmark of an aspirant's journey and reflects invaluable lessons on the path to enlightenment. He found that in South Africa, children lacked a deeper spiritual upbringing. Through his master, he realized that children imbibe values that are taught through care, loving acts of kindness, and through examples that have been set that refine character. Based on a strong foundation of universal human values, Swami Sahajananda began publishing books to inspire children, especially through stories and simple words of wisdom. In obedience to his master, Swami Sivananda, the term spiritual darlings was coined and children are fostered with love, care and reverence. The headquarters of Divine Life Society of South Africa is located on a 2.5 hectare site in Mountbatten Drive, Reservoir Hills. The ashram is only a 15 minute drive from the centre of the city of Durban. The complex comprises prayer halls, Gangarani, Sahaja Kutir, clinic, printing presses, aspirants quarters, bookshop and adequate parking facilities. Pujay Swamiji resided at this ashram for almost five decades and devotees believe that his presence permeates the entire ashram precinct. In addition, the society has many branches and prayer groups all over the country. 
A major regional centre called the Sivananda International Cultural Centre is located at Sivananda Nagar near La Mercy on the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal. The centre is about 30 kilometres from Durban. The centre is situated on a 22 hectare site amidst rolling hills and green cane fields. Conceived in 1987, in the year of the Divine Master's birth centenary, the SICC has blossomed into a magnificent complex. The complex comprises prayer halls, Kangarani, swimming pool, Bhagarathi, water fountain, Guru Kripa, nature reserve, Sivananda Arjuna Peace Center, Sivananda Vishwananda and Ganga Stadiums, Sewing Center, Aspirants Quarters, Printing Presses, Ultra-Modern Kitchen Facilities, Several Dining Halls, Workshops, Play Parks, A Bookshop and Adequate Parking Facilities.